good morning good morning our people good morning once again today is uh december the 4th of 2021 you know that i have a master in uh jacking of the date so i'm actually looking at the date just to make sure i don't have it twisted so thank you for joining us today we're going to continue with our part two of our topic from last week so we are excited to be here we hope everyone is doing fine there are a couple of people that we didn't see last week i hope they will be here this week and i hope they are fine with all this uh new variant going on we do not want that to be your portion in jesus name amen so whoever that created this variant should die from this variant and be destroyed by this variant we don't know anything about uh, covid and COVID will not know anything about us. So thank you for joining us. My name is Mona Jim Saga, and I have my sister here to introduce herself. Thank you, my sister. Uh, our people see here. You know, Amen. So sorry for all those that don't understand evil. Uh, once in a while, we just dive in and tell you where we're coming from, our roots. And it will remain so we can't change it. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, do everything, you know. Uh, we're proud of the work you're doing. So my name is Dr. A.P. Simon Kube, and here in Lexington, Kentucky. We'll give you food for thought as we proceed. You see, last week, our sister Mona shared um, something about authentic people. You know, it's still on our wall. You go there. So in the face of house cleaning, that is going on in various quarters. It has become important for us to explain to our people the difference between real people and fake people. Mm -hmm. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> and by real people, we mean authentic people, you know, people that are self aware. Those that like kind of, they can catch shame if something happens. So they are careful what they're doing. So these are real people. They have something to lose, they have their name to protect. So they are real people. These people connect with people in a deep level. They are not fake and, you know, turning around today, they are Monday, tomorrow, they are Tuesday, the other day they become Wednesday, another day they become Thursday. No, they connect with people in a real level. They try to make you to understand. So in, in working with people, you understand who you are dealing with. It's important to make this demarcation in what you're doing. See, these people usually open up themselves to others. They show their vulnerability and uh, they want to serve and help other people without seeking personal gain. Yeah. People. Mm -hmm. They know and accept their strength and their weakness. They know their limitations. They know this thing, I can do it. At this point, I can't do it. Let me allow somebody else that can do it to do it. And they step aside and allow somebody that can do it better, do it. These are real people. And whenever they make a mistake, they're quick to own up their mistake and avoid blaming other people. Is that person? Is that person? Is that person? No, it is you. So these are real people. They make mistakes. They know they're human beings. They're not God. They're not all powerful, all that. They say, oh, sorry, my bad. I made a mistake, and this is what it is. How can we make it better? How can we correct it? But on the other hand, the, the fake people, the unrealistic, unrealistic people, they lack consistency. <laughs> because they a little to the left, a little to the right. Exactly. Today they're black, tomorrow they're white. They feel this pressure to be who they are not, thinking that that will bring success to them. They lie, deceive, and manipulate other people and even situations. And they never learn from their mistakes. Mm -mm. Non-repentant. Non-repentant. So they are people pleasers and attention seekers. Now we want to give a shout out to some women who are stepping up and trying to hold our men accountable. Yes, we say our men, because they are the first that uh, white men are allowed to go to school. So most of them are educated, and that's why most of them hold positions. While our women were still in the kitchen cooking food, because they didn't have the opportunity to go to school. So that's why we call the men. Not because men naturally or women, uh, this one is better than this or better than that. No, we're talking in this situation that we are in. We want our men to take responsibility of their mistakes of their errors, the things they did not do right. The position was given to them. They were the leaders, the senators, the president, the governors, everything. They were there. They carried all. Under their watch. Under their watch. 
So mm -hmm. you cannot now come when there's a problem. You will not own up the mistake and say, oh, I, I, I missed it. This is what you must be held accountable. Yes. So some of our women are beginning to come up, step up, and hold our men accountable for what they have been doing in the continent. We want to give a shout out in Yoruba territory, uh, Otumba Shade Olukoye. He said, Ma, continue what you're doing. They call you names, they do whatever. Don't, don't budge, keep moving. And we also want to call um, of IPOB, Dr. Nelly. Um, you need to be careful. So we urge these women to remain um, truthful, honest, and real. These fake, evil, uh, so-called freedom fighters, we attack you. There are the people that want to leave Nigeria, but Nigeria, they don't know what Nigeria to leave them. Dr. Nelly, we encourage you to dig, deep, dig deeper. The water got bad from the source. Those you are calling names are actually serving bigger fishes both inside and outside IPOB. These are the clues we'll give you because we were there. We uh, we suspect that you have a clean heart and you want to be sincere about washing off some evil in that place you are. We were there before, so we have more information than you. But you haven't got there yet. So we urge you to dig deeper. Be careful, be watchful, be consistent, and of course, be prayerful. Because those that you're calling angels might actually be the enemy that you're looking for. Thank you so much. Thank you, sister, for that. And thank you so much for joining us. Please help us to share, share, share. You know, the, the algorithm is definitely skewed against us. And it's okay. The good news, like we keep reiterating on this show, is that the phone calls and amount of support that we get after this show is more than it doesn't even add up facebook you know you guys are embarrassing yourself you claim there are two people watching and then when we are done with the show we get 500 uh emails and text messages but in that way it doesn't matter so just help us to continue to share the work that we are doing is very important and we thank you for the role that you're playing and this is what we say when we talk about the three uh t's your talent your treasure and your time so whatever that you can use to propagate this uh, 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 freedom that we are looking for, this self-determination that we are looking for. Even though some of the people that have been following the so-called Nina strategy doesn't know the difference between self-determination and referendum. They are all confused, but it's okay. You know, we still um, asking our viewers to go and learn. Don't be follow, follow. We don't want you to be follow, follow. We don't want to be supreme or either that you cannot ask questions. What we want is for people to understand the protocol, the strategy that LNC is using to get us our freedom so that nobody will come and use maybe American accent or Queen's accent or, you know, fake wig. By the way, this is my hair. They use their fake wig to confuse you as to what needs to be done. The work is out there in the open. It's not hidden. You can go to Lower Niger Congress website. You can go to their Facebook. You can go to their website. You can go to ninasvoice.org. You have avenues to get information. Do not let anyone deceive you, not with their accent, not with their body parts, not with their lipstick, any of those, not with anything at all. We have come of age where we should do better. That education that we've been called the most educated fools in America, maybe we can turn it around and stop answering fools by getting engaged in how we can get to our destination. So again, so that it won't be monarchy deceived you or whatever. So you can see, look at the plan that we have on the table. Get somebody else if you're confused because it can be, you know, overwhelming the information. Share it among each other. Come together and say, does this even make sense? What we are doing, does it make sense? So that it won't be, oh, somebody told me it makes sense. No, 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 no. We don't want to be deceived anymore, please. We don't want to be emotional about it either to say, oh, I have known Mona for 20 years. I believe everything she said. No, 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 no. Don't believe everything I say. Go and look at the document. Go and look at the information. It's there for you to learn the protocol so that you will not be deceived. You will not be deceived. Somebody will not come and hijack your self-determination and tell you something that is not so that you can be consistent in all your ways. So as our topic says, 
<coughs> excuse me, I've been under the weather, target the head of octopus and the tentacles will be destroyed. Last week, we gave you guys a little insights um, regarding what octopus and the tentacles can do, right? So you have all these things, all these vices against you, they are everywhere. All to, for us to find out that it's all connected into one system, one network is, the, you know, and it's not even that complex. One network is the thing that is sending out the signals that has affected the daily um, lives that we're living. So what do we need to do? We need to now target that head. When we destroy that one target, <laughs> the tentacles don't have any choice than to pass up and die. So, but we have to understand because if not, we'll be fighting each tentacles, thinking that's where the issues are coming from, not knowing that it's coming from one network. So Africa is blessed. However, Africans are the most poorest citizens of this earth. There seems to be nothing for Africans in Africa, as Africans are all migrating out of Africa. For over 400 years, it's either Africans are being stolen from Africa as a slave, or hardship is forcing them out of their land as self-made slaves. This is so prevalent lately where we see mothers that are even pregnant, mothers with newborn babies, we will, they will rather go to that journey than to stay in their countries. What a travesty. It takes two to tango. So this weekend, we will continue to look at the several tentacles used to enslave us and hold us down. It will be wise for us to find out if Africans played any role in the enslavement and predicaments. What have we done with our blessings? What have we done with our blessings in Africa? Just tell me, why have Africans not felt the blessings of Africa? Why do we consider other places the land of milk and honey? When we can eat mango, throw it in our front yard and it will start growing. That will never happen in America. The last time I tried to plant an avocado, they told me that I need a female and a male one in order for the damn thing to grow. I'm like, a female and a male one? She said, we have ever heard of that before? <laughs> yeah, they told me that I needed a female. Uh, uh, first time. Yeah, I was like, almost a dog. Female land. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> no dog. how it happens in my land, man. You just throw it in the ground and it will grow. So tell me which land then is the land of milk and honey. So why haven't we felt the blessings of Africa? Why haven't we kept our promises to one another? We have allowed social injustice gender inequality and discrimination to limit our potentials as a continent. When we see something happening to others, like the little birds that are flying, they shoot one down, you look, you say, ah, they didn't shoot me, let me keep going. You never stop to find out why your comrade, why your brother or your sister was shot down. You keep moving because it didn't affect you. We have also allowed wickedness and lack of mercy to eat deep into the fabric of our society, to the, to the extent that those on top do everything possible to make sure that those below do not make it up. And why those below do everything possible to pull those on top down to their level. And even now, our people prefer to jump to the top overnight rather than going through the process. And the sad part is that people are dying in the process of this. And the life or the universe does not offer mercy to you, even though you're ignorant. So it won't say, oh, because you didn't know you would die in the Mediterranean Sea. So when you get there, you will not die. You just don't know who will be the victim. So how long are we going to watch? Watch while our counterparts, and Daniela Haber, were the same human beings, <laughs> why they subjugate us, use our resources for themselves, and we are busy fighting each other. So today, like we said, we're going to start with the part two of targeting the head of this octopus so that the tentacles will be destroyed. Sister, go ahead. <coughs> Thank you, Sister Mona. So, <coughs> sorry, dear. So uh, we're going to continue watching our video. Sister Mona is trying to pull it up. Um, last week, we saw all the things, you know, how the um, slave, slave trade, you know, part of the tentacles, slave trade came and when we said oh the slave trade oh don't steal people they said okay we'll come and colonize you in your land we'll come and meet you where you are since you don't want us to steal you out of the continent we will bring all our ammunition <laughs> come inside there and come and enslave you there 
still take your resources and do what we want to do to you by ourselves. When we say, hey, colonialism is too much, they say, okay, neo-colonialism, we are taking your independence. Take the independence. You want independence? Take it. And they gave us fake independence. Because while we are there thinking and dancing that we are collecting independence, we didn't know that they have planted their stooges inside with their policies. <laughs> continue. Nothing had changed. Nothing changed. So we are continuing the struggle and it did not start now. We're saying this, the struggle is 400 years. So these are the tentacles they use to get us down. And what again, we'll come in and, and, and break it down more for you. What the next thing is. Thank you, Sister Mona. Thank you. The idea that uh, Britain disapproved and the world disapproved of, of apartheid um, and the racism of apartheid, but it didn't necessarily mean that we were giving up on our role in Africa. I didn't think so. In fact, within 10 months of the wind of change speech, Britain had surrendered two key African territories, France 14. The rate of decolonization when it arrived was breathtaking. Many were freed without bloodshed. <laughs> 1960 was <laughs> the year of Africa. And My early Alzheimer's diagnosis gave us time to adapt. Unfortunately, they have to um, make money off of this video. This video we found online, so be patient. Continued into the next three decades. <laughs> The transfer of power need not indicate that the Europeans suddenly realize that, well, it's time to give independence to the natives of Africa and Asia. No. It is in view of the possibility of large-scale war to sub-Saharan Africa that the French understood that it was better to prepare to negotiate with the nationalists and hence you have the liberation movement. Will you go back to the Congo one day? No, never. Do you think that uh, it's finished for the Europeans in the Congo? Yes, I think so. But no sooner had African nations escaped the shackles of colonialism than a new battle for the continent was underway, <coughs> the Cold War. Back when the colonial idea had Europe's politicians spellbound, the communists had opposed it. And throughout their years of struggle, African nationalists had found a powerful friend in the Soviet Union. These two great powers, America and Russia, begin to carve up the world between them. Independence coincided with the Cold War, where uh, it mattered whose side the president was in terms of this global struggle between Russia and America. And they both tried to organize coups to get their, their people in, and this was very destabilizing. The Congo's Patrice Lumumba was a hardline nationalist, labeled a communist by America. His game of Russian roulette appeared to have paid off when in 1960, he oversaw the handover of sovereignty from Belgium. He was to become victim of the opposition between the West and the East, between the bloc, Soviet bloc and Americans. Because militia leaders with control of the mineral-rich Katanga province refused to be swallowed up in a wider republic led by a Soviet-backed Lumumba. Fearing their own material losses, the US and Belgium supported the rebels. And just three weeks after bringing the country into independence, Lumumba was captured by the Katanga militiamen. Of course. And killed. Of course. Tortured and killed. Not for what he did, but for what he could represent. Lumumba suffered more indignities, including being forced to... And their media, their media is spreading the news the Congo, so they can Premier. spread fear across African countries. Congo's riches, combined with global geopolitics, had again proven a disastrous mix. And with freedom from overt colonial exploitation, the scramble for resources was driven underground. For a fleeting moment, the Lumumba affair raised the questions of what in Africa... Mm. Look at what you're doing to your brother. ...strong arm of colonial rule, and whether national unity was achievable with hostilities bubbling beneath the surface. But in the excitement of independence, this was quickly forgotten. 
I suppose one of the ironies is that the European countries that were democratic um, didn't in really introduce much democracy to Africa. So when independence comes and people can vote, um, many of these countries then politically exploded. All sorts of political problems that have been suppressed by colonial imperial rule then burst out and many of them, like in Congo, um, practically tore the countries to pieces. I think it was a very unplanned thing, frankly. And it was only in the last uh, year and a half or so before independence that all of a sudden, um, with independence looming, uh, we started to have accelerated programs to, to, uh, to, to, to train locals. Of course, that, that, that wasn't enough. So in the end, we handed over to a country which was not properly prepared for independence. I think that we would have done Africa a lot of good by staying and preparing flat out uh, for another five or six years. But for Africans everywhere, decolonization couldn't happen fast enough. For that generation of Nigerians, it was just um, a feeling of complete euphoria, um, of triumph, um, um, of total confidence in the future of Nigeria. They really believed that Nigeria was, um, and, and all of Africa, I mean, they were Pan-Africans. Um, they believed very much in the idea that the whole of Africa um, was going to rise um, from from the shackles of the past. Dream, big dream, big hope. <coughs> People thought that independence would bring about the solution to many problems. So it was in a very romantic period. Celebration of independence, dances, big projects. That euphoria wouldn't last. Euphoria indeed. All right, sister, go ahead. Thank you, my sister. So our people, if you see, as we show these things, please want you to think deep. And that's what we don't we keep saying. We don't want you to be reactional. We don't want you to be emotional. We want you to calm down, get the information right, so that you understand why LNC Nina said this is the solution. War will not get us there. For those of you that are busy showing, uh, uh, like you pick uh, pieces of uh, metals, gather it and say, now you have brought misery. Please stop attracting war to our region. Please. We are going to get this self-determination without war. What did I say? We are going to get this self-determination without war. Those that want to draw war, you will consume yourself. You get yourself consumed and will still be free. If you cannot understand what we are trying to explain here meet somebody else to explain it to you to listen understand and explain it to you so that you understand what we're saying do not bring solution that will not lead us anywhere it will be the same going in circles going in circles mm -hmm. going in circles you have fought war in africa for how many years is africa free <laughs> Where we are now, this is 21st century. We work with negotiations. And some of you will not understand, say they're speaking English. Yes, we're speaking English because our colonizers are speaking English. They use English to colonize us. Now we have learned to speak that English. We are meeting them on the table. We are going to negotiate ourselves out of it. That's what others did. Singapore that you're hearing, that you're traveling over there to and carry things. That is what they did. Mm -hmm. China. There is no single nation in this world that was not colonized. I'm telling you, is it one colonized uh, colonizer or the other? America, name them. But they moved out of it. They made up their mind to say it's better. And we're saying this is time for Africa. Is Africa's turn? And we're going to do it like matured people. We're not going to be in the forest running around with broke scrap met metals and calling it a, a missile. Getting our people killed for no just reason. <laughs> so you can see when they uh, asked our people, our people started like uh, nationalism, you know, push for it came. People started asking for independence. So nations were given independence, some in the 50s, some in the 60s. But we're saying that the independence was fake. 
because as they are giving independence, they are putting their leaders, their, their agents within to run it. And if the people try to bring in somebody that will lead them, they will carry out coup. They will come and do coup and kill the person and put their own person. Yeah. We say, like, till date, we've had 40 coups in Africa. 40 and still counting. You think you were the ones killing our people? No. They are using some of our, the bad eggs in our midst to kill the leaders that the people have chosen. Now they give you fake democracy. And we said, there's something we wrote last week. He said, there is no democracy in colonialism. There's nothing democratic about it. <laughs> so they'll give you fake uh, 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 democracy and fake constitution. A constitution they know that will never get you anywhere. They will impose it on you. While you're trying to get a constitution that will work for you, they will use their agents to get the one that will never work for you. And they will ensure that nothing moves forward in your country. They will implement it. They will be with it so that the more you are struggling to come out, something is holding you down. Like a big yoke. Like those that are from Benin. I remember in those days, they would say, oh, you're sleeping. That thing is weighing you down. So that's the type of constitution they will give you. You will never arise above it because the constitution is the governing document for the country. Yep. Policies are based on the constitution. So if your constitution is fraudulent, if your constitution was not made by the people, there is no way that you will serve the people. It will, will, will not serve, serve the people. people. It's as simple as that. And that's what we're telling people. Those that say they want to go 2023 election, they want to do this. We said, we are telling you that the constitution that they will use to swear you in, we, the people, do not make it. The constituents, the meaning of constitution, the constituents will say, this is how we will be ruled. We are saying it was imposed on us. And you are saying you want to go for election. Don't you think you will die before that election comes? Because the people have been pushed to the wall. So we'll give you another example. Like when uh, Obama and co. created Boko Haram, <laughs> they captured Chibok girls. It's <laughs> the same system. We told you that both the action and the reaction is from the same source. Yes, sir. It will do you the more you look, the less you see. And we are telling our people, if you can sit with us, if you can stay with daughters of truth, you will begin to see more. The more you look, the more you will see. You will not be doing the more you look, the less you see. Because we'll give you the code that will make you to see more, even as you look. So they created Boko Haram to remove uh, President Goodluck. Because President Goodluck was trying to make policies that would change Nigeria and change the people. Yep. Well, Goodluck was going to tamper with the constitution. He had already done the comfort. The next thing was to implement it. So many other changes were coming. Because President Goodluck had his people at heart. Let's tell you some of the things that you don't know. He, he was not far away from his people. His people were meeting him and telling him how they were suffering. How the world are looking for is to change because there's issue of resource control. Their land is being destroyed. Oil was spillage everywhere. They cannot farm. Their fish is destroyed in their rivers. And people coughing out blood. If you go to the south-south, your car will be covered with black. Imagine if the car is covered with black, what will the lungs be like? So they know these things and they were meeting their brother and telling him, you have to do something. And he was set to do something. For those of you that keep lying against him. But you know what? The colonizers will not allow it. No. Nope. So they met and convenanted with their agents, the full and neat elites. We keep telling you people, this is no issue about being tribalistic. It is calling a spade a spade. The colonizers will never colonize the people if they don't find a partner in your midst. And we're saying in the case of Nigeria, the partners for the Britain, the, uh, the, the part of the people that want to colonize us, are full and neat elites. We are not mixing words with it. Since we have been saying this, thing, why would they come out and say, no, we are not part of it? They know what they're doing. The caliphate is the finger of Britain in Nigeria. That the ones supervising the project for them.
So that's why they created Boko Haram. First of all, they'll bring hard drugs to the area. Give them tramadol, give them anything. Like now it's that east. You see them with their uh, uh, methamphetamine. They will put the, the youths of the area on drugs and then use them to destroy the area. Mm. So the chaos you're seeing in northeast and northwest was created. And then as a result, okay, see them now. These are partners. They are partners. For those of you still under illusion that Buhari is working for you. As we are saying, they created it and then kidnapped cheaper girls so that it will be that good luck is not handling security. It's blackmail. Blackmail. Serious if blackmail. People put a leader, they will blackmail the and leader. They're here in America of... voting Democrat. Exactly. Clapping for them. Rallying for them. Spending exactly. money on them. So they will blackmail the leaders the people voted in. Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso. Go and check it. It's the same thing in Africa, all the African nations. If the leaders, if the people get leaders that will lead them, they will blackmail them out of office. Either yeah. they say corruption, they will say they will be doing so many things that if you don't look well, you will kill your own brother. Sister, if know. they are worried about corruption with all the things that Buhari and Co has done, exactly. So why haven't see. they intervened? So they are not worried about corruption. corruption. Have they you are not worried about, about it. it. With all the dead people on the street, they are not worried about it. They are not worried with all about the economy, it. our uh, currency taking a nose dive, they are not worried about it. Now that we have went from, we have gone from a country of uh, what is it called in terms of uh, being poor. Now we are the lowest. Yes, they are not worried about. It. When good luck was there and they claimed that we we're a little higher up, they were in there putting in fight. So that's why you now saw Hillary Clinton at that time refused to declare Boko Haram a terrorist group. Good luck knocked on all doors, knocked on all doors, trying to get ammunition, trying to get things for security. They refuse because they will set you up. They will set African leaders that want to help the lead the Africans. They will set you up. They will blackmail you. It's the unusual thing to do. That's what they do. So you see, Obama is here setting up Boko Haram and kidnapping Chibo girls with his agents in the Northeast and Northwest. His wife is here carrying placard and saying, bring back our girls. Bring back our girls. <laughs> it is all together. Then the stupid people like Obi Okwesileze, the stupid people in our midst, we join them. Bring back our girls. Bring back our girls. Mm. The aim was to remove good luck and bring in a Fulani caliphate partner led by Buhari, their friend. We don't want you to be looking and be seeing less. We want you where you look. Let your eye coordinate with your brain so that the more you look, the more you see. Enough of this, the more you look, the less you see. Use your brain. We are mothers. We have come here to open the eyes of our children because you are the ones dying and it's affecting us that you're dying. Zamun, I don't know if we are ready for the next segment. My dear, I am. I wanted to pull up this uh, uh, news report okay. because some of these things see my we talk, we talk and do, we show you so that you're not confused. As we're telling you right now, our people that reside here in, in uh, US are still walking around associating themselves with Democrats. And all along, if you look at the historic uh, uh, pathway of where we are right now, between Sheila Jackson between Maxine in uh, Chicago, the first African-American uh, senator, uh, senator. They are part of, and they are Democrats. We were singing for these people. I even broke my shoulder trying to be like Obama, uh, what's the wife's name, Michelle. We're doing push-ups right, because we were ready to go everywhere in Houston to make sure everybody vote them in. And that came from, because we didn't know any better. We never knew who was against us. We never knew who was fighting against us. We never knew about all the evil because I, now that I have more information, now that I have more knowledge, I'm sitting here thinking, how did I get myself involved in all of this? So as we speak, you cannot even, 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 even dare enter anything without doing your homework. You're better off not participating because if you don't know, you can be promoting, you can be the one, you know, because. 
in our <coughs> in our introduction, we talked about what role have African play in all of this enslavement. As I'm telling you right now, we are currently playing role in our enslavement. Most people here in the US are either Igbo or Yoruba, and they're all assassins. They don't even have political power. They don't even know what it is to be part of the political process. But when US goes to Nigeria, they go and mingle with the Fulanese. But we are the one paying taxes, working here for them, enslaving ourselves for them. But their business partners are the Fulanese. Do you think by now that our people have learned enough to realize that we need to gather together to make sure there's a difference between Igbo, Yoruba, and the Fulanese that are working for the slave masters? We are not smart enough. He says here, grassley Vita demand answers, including refusal to name Boko Haram a terrorist organization with all the things these people did. This is another evidence that is the same octopus spreading their tentacles, holding us down. I will continue with the video. <coughs> so sad. You have to know. We must study. We have to go and dig out information. We can no longer be a uh, uh, child or still in a childhood uh, stage when we're supposed to be in an adult. Uh, an adult. It's no longer. Oh, somebody's writing down here from Mosley Brown. That's the first female senator. That's the one that went and took bribe from Nigerian government. That's who, yeah, the first black female senator, my dear. Thank you so much for whoever that helped me to clarify that. So we have to, we have to know more. We have to know more so that as we look, the more we can see. If not, these people will continue to take us on a merry-go-round as if we are dumb. Maybe we are. <laughs> I think the 60s were a very violent decade. And so the, the, the initial euphoria disappeared very, very quickly within a year, maybe two years. And then from 62 to 1970, it was just um, one incident of violence, of carnage um, after another. It faded when the military began to seize power. And the military are not leaders. They are not political figures. They only are specialized in what? in the use of the weapon and so on. They have no political mission except to maintain the security of the country and so on. So you have the, the coming of new leadership for whom nobody voted. That was a terrible fact. Of course, there they go again with their commercial. Wait, is this thing? <laughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> Sovereign states of Africa, left with the limited <laughs> occupation and the challenges of state building, were soon consumed by bitter power struggles. In many places, militiamen overran the nationalist thinkers. Within the first 20 years of independence, there were 40 successful coups and many more failed ones. Former British territories were torn apart by ethnic conflict as the dark side of ruled by proxy gradually came to light. One of the problems with independence when it came was that the colonial powers hadn't ruled Nigeria. Nigerians as Nigerians, they ruled them as Hausa people or Yoruba people or Igbo people. Did you all hear that? And Kenyans as Kenyans, but as Kikuyu, Luo people. And suddenly they all had to be Kenyans, Nigerians, and um, very quickly the politicians naturally looked to their own people for their political power base, and they and politics became very ethnicized. In the 30 years which followed the Year of Africa, two million people are thought to have died in ethnic violence in ex-British colonies alone. In the case of Nigeria, basically when the British left in 1960, um, they um they they left um a political class that was already even at that point divided against itself they had a, a system where the chiefs and the kings um ran things and 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 just reported to the district officers in western nigeria as a result of the, <clears throat> this encounter schools were built churches 
were built and very quickly an elite, an educated elite um, emerged. Um, in the north, again, with the same system, the, the, the chiefs and the kings said, okay, we accept you as our colonial power, but can you just step, you know, just stay out of our business of, of things? And, and so they, um, in most parts of the north, they would not allow churches and schools to be built. The consequence of that about 100 years later was that there was an imbalance between the north and the south and then ended up in a civil war. But elsewhere, the problem wasn't the rate of decolonization, but the lack of it. France redefined its relationship with its African colonies to become the unseen hand in national affairs. Quietly, French control was going underground. The French never really left when at independence. Behind, for many years afterwards, you'd go to a, a, a ministry in Francophone Africa, there would, you would talk to the minister, who would be African. Behind the door, there would be a Frenchman um, signing the checks, doing the accounts, reporting to Paris. In 2006, President Sarkozy promised a cleanup of the French foothold in Africa. Yeah, right. No more secrets. Yeah, right. Real independence. <laughs> But the Skill Day celebrations in Paris this year sent a clear message that they remain as closely interested in the continent's affairs as they ever were. Ever since independence, domination of resources has continued to fuel violence in many states, with former Belgian Congo still seemingly locked in a vicious cycle of conflict over its mines. African rulers, foreign multinationals, and governments have continued to strike deals to plunder commodities and help cripple national economies already set back by the colonial experience. Yep. I suppose in the 19th century, the Europeans just went in, enslaved people, forced them to dig and, uh, and took it all for themselves. I think these days there's a complicity between the uh, the rulers of Africa and uh, Western companies or middlemen. Mines in whichever country um, uh, you're, you're talking about uh, needed somebody to bring in the uh, the personnel and the equipment to, to dig out the minerals, um, to employ people to continue to dig out the minerals, to maintain the place. Outside investment then, as now, is terribly important. The continuing diversion of minerals isn't the only exploitative practice. Today, Africa is the largest recipient of external aid in the world. Of course. A continent where half the population survive on less than a dollar a day. But for every aid dollar coming in, ten dollars are lost through illegal capital heading out. <laughs> Four hundred and thirty-seven billion dollars has left Africa between 2000 and 2000 and 2008. No, Just that's an underestimation, dude. You don't know what you're talking about. Illegally. Um, and much of that has flowed into uh, tax havens owned by European countries, okay. uh, Britain particularly. Um, and so the ordinary people of Africa haven't benefited from these, this last decade, which has been um, a very good decade for Africa economically. But you, when you go there, you still see people as poor as ever. Under a shadow financial system built on the ruins of colonialism, foreign banks and multinationals working in Africa avoid paying tax. Anonymous trust accounts, fake foundations, money laundering, tax havens and trade mispricing all go unchecked. Since 1970, an estimated $854 billion has been lost, enough to have wiped out external debt and have left 600 billion more for development. The financial rewards can be traced back to those countries proudly bailing out a dependent Africa with aid, a striking parallel to the colonial story. Also echoing the past, China is entering the scene once monopolized by Europe, opening up options 
for African commerce. The process of decolonization is still unfolding. It's quite interesting that China has now come into the scenario, vying um, for contracts and, and for rights um, to <clears throat> exploit natural resources with European countries. It's China's demand for African resources which has pushed their prices globally. That's actually been very good for Africa. But when what? African governments are really taking the best advantage of this one-off opportunity to sell their what's under their soil, um, is I'm not sure why the jury's out. This is the moment to build the infrastructure, to educate people, bring health um, to their people, and I'm not sure that that is being done as effectively as it might. You know, you don't have, I'm telling you, it's not being done. So well, don't Cuba's it. United States of Africa may never have materialized. Africa today does have success stories, like Botswana, where diamond revenues have financed development under a multi-party government, and Senegal, where democracy, stability, and civil liberties have characterized the past 50 years of self-rule. I think we can be very confident about the future of Africa. Africa espouses education. It espouses um, uh, modernity. Um, uh, it is also becoming more and more democratic. We have in what not sense, just the natural resources, but the the intellectual resources, the strength of character. I believe a lot in the the, the new professional classes. All right, sister, go ahead. Hmm. You see, the, the type of information you hear here, you now say, where are our journalists? Those that like to use pancakes. What are you doing as a journalist? Why are you not digging out information? Because somebody was saying, oh, we need to unite. and You cannot unite except you have the proper information. Education is key. That's why we come here every Saturday to educate our people. Like you heard in the video, they said there was a, 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 a divide the knowledge base of the North and the South. The Northern people were intentionally kept ignorant and they ensured it, the Northern elites, the Northern politicians, they ensured that their people are ignorant. Quota system is one thing that makes sure that the Northern part of Nigeria, that the youths are ignorant and did not go to school. Because so far they don't go to school, they will use them. You can use somebody that is well informed Someone that knows her right or his right. You can't mm -hmm. use them. Mm -hmm. So they left these people ignorant. And today, we're having VVF. We're having all sorts of things that are so backward. They thought that we are doing the South. Oh, let's do quota system and stop and delay the South. Yes, as you're delaying the South, you are you're delaying yourself. You not even bet more. Mm -hmm. So all these things are going under. We say, we our intelligent journalists that because if information is key is power if the people were informed correctly these things would have stopped before now that is why we come here every saturday to talk to our people now these people introduced bitter power struggle everywhere in africa first of all they created states first they created countries countries that had no business being together as one as if it's not enough, they went entered inside that country and started creating states, like in the case of Nigeria. The 36 states, their boundaries are divided in the midst of the people. Like they balkanize everything, mix everything like crazy people. And then they will tell you that, oh, in this land they found gas. Then these people will now start fighting the boundary because they know that this land was their land before. But now they've given it to another person where they're dividing states. War will start. Endless battles of war. If a Modekeke or this one, that, that one, everybody is fighting because the people, the indigenous people know that this is their land. This land, and you are not calling it river state. It used to be my land. What are you talking about? Because it's only the thing, the currency, is the resources in the land that are stealing. So, causing trouble everywhere. We began to kill ourselves. They introduce the do or die type of politics. The winner takes it all. Hostility everywhere. We keep telling people that these people do not introduce democracy to Africa. They exported 
corruption to Africa, not democracy. <laughs> implanted. They oh. implanted corruption. They built that they they infused corruption in the foundation of Africa. All the African countries they were built on the basis of corruption. And that's why you're seeing the seeds of corruption everywhere. Whatever you sow is what you see. The fruits will come out. What plants? You can't plant mango and expect to see apple. If you plant mango, you're going mango tree will give you mango fruits. The foundation of Africa is corruption, lies, and fraud. Like in the case of Nigeria. Nigeria itself is fraudulent. The constitution of Nigeria is fraudulent. It's corrupted. It's everything evil. How will you now sow that and expect the fruits to come out and be anything different? Hmm. That's why you're seeing what is going on. Hostility everywhere. Corruption everywhere. These are intentional. So they did not introduce. There's no there's no democracy in colonialism. There is none. The system itself is nothing democratic. Meanwhile, we had democracy in our land, like in Ibo land. We were practicing democracy. It's just that we did not use the word English to call it democracy. So mm -hmm. they did not bring democracy to Africa. What they brought to Africa is corruption. They introduced corruption everywhere in our religion. They corrupted our religion. They have corrupted our tradition. They corrupted, corrupted our politics. They corrupted even our commerce. They corrupted everything. They promote their criminal partners and dehumanize and kill our true nationalists and hmm. leaders. Why people move around like zombies? Because they mesmerize the people. The more you look, the less you see. They're just turning around like zombies. We need to use our brains. We'll give you another example. During the Biafran genocide, because this is we are saying that history that anybody can go and verify. We want you to begin to be people that are ready to get information, read it, look for videos. Don't use your data looking for the breast and the bum bum of a woman. You're complicating mm -hmm. issue for us. Use your data to get information into your head. Ask what happened to my forefathers. Begin to ask questions and dig in. Learn from what happened in other countries so that you begin to understand better. So like the Biafran genocide, which we know that they manipulated. Our people, even the Northern people were not ready to go to war. They manipulated the Northern and the South, Middle, Yoruba, everybody into war. Go and do investigation, you will see. These things are not lying. And these are people that have been living together exactly. for years. For years, they fought no war. Why is it all of a sudden we are fighting and killing up to 3.5 million Igbos? We worked together before. What went wrong? What changed? What is different? An enemy came. That's what changed. So during the Biafran War, they had their agents in our land both male and female. They are our people. They are not from outside that because they will recruit the people. They know the people that will be greedy, people that will be easily manipulated, because... people that love money. Mm -hmm. And you have these people in every society. So they look out for them and recruit them. So during the, uh, the Afro war, they were working for them. And when they finished, they moved them immediately after the war. Flew them to Britain to go and study. Those people, when they came back, that the ones that started receiving juicy positions from the one Nigeria that they created, the enemy created one Nigeria. They became the contractors, the ministers. Sometimes when they tell you, oh, first time minister. <laughs> <laughs> minister of what? For who? And for what? And, for, and, and by, by who? These are the people that will collect three trillion naira for work and use one million to work and put the rest inside their pockets. And then somebody will say, he's doing well for himself if you see the house he built for himself. <laughs> How come you are getting so wealthy and the people are getting so poor? Hmm. 
You are so smart. You are so intelligent. It's only you. Not only you, Wakakam. Yeah. Your brain, they bring money. You just sell a tomato. You sell okra. You become wealthy. You open a hotel. Have a juice. Have a, 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 a spices. Then you come <laughs> here. Show us that spice now. Let us continue to sell it too. No, these people are the people serving the colonial masters. And you know what the unfortunate thing? My people that they're stealing from will turn around and start praising them. People that are enjoying the one Nigeria that you are not part of, they are stealing from you. The money meant for your hospitals, for your schools, for your road building, everything, the money that was meant for you and your children. They stole all and created. You turn around and started praising them. Ezego, Akabajiroma, on one eighty Laura, the one and the mad. Have you seen how you're doing yourselves? That's what we're saying. What role did we play in this enslavement? Hmm. Then we come to wedding that's spreading money for you like this with single hand. Meanwhile, when you engage them, you know that's stupid. There's no way. I tell people, I say, it seems that the more stupid you are, the richer you become. Because it's about stealing. It's about the people that the colonial masters can manipulate. The people that are ready to sell their people. So they don't need intelligence. That's why I see most people that are very rich in our land, they're very stupid. Mm -hmm. stupid. How can we be talking about freedom and they're not coming here to sponsor it? It shows that mm -hmm. stupid now. You didn't able to tell you they're very stupid. And that's the predicament. The worst predicament is that we now turn around and be praising them. Yeah, he's very rich. Uh, don't be, don't be jealous. Don't, uh, don't, be, uh, don't, don't envy them. They are rich. How did they become rich? Ask yourself that question. If you just ask them this question, even in churches, people are depriving you. When we talk, their agents will come and start fighting. Hey, leave Papa G O. Hey, leave uh, 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 what they call them. Our our priests. Eh, he's miracle. He's doing miracle. We need hospitals, not miracle. Mm -hmm. How come the yeah, Americans are not doing it? What is the other one? Don't touch my anointed. Don't touch my anointed. I'm not doing it. <laughs> then we come. All the poor, all the hungry, <laughs> yes, we come out to you. Me, where you're directing them. Ask yourself a question. America, how come they're building hospitals instead of big churches where people will be clapping? And receiving miracle. You are one million in the church, for example, and two people receive miracle. If you build a hospital, at least half a million you receive treatment, which is miraculous. Which one is better? <laughs> which one is better? What about miracle do you prefer? We are here fighting for your freedom. People will have the audacity to come here and attack us, slaves. That's your fortunate thing. They are stealing from you. You are turning and clapping for them. And fighting for them. Ready to kill your brothers and sisters to preserve your slave master's agents. Wow. We are calling our people. Please, begin to think better. You know these people we are telling you about. You know, If you can think, you will understand what we are saying. And then we'll come and team up. Because why we are not uniting is that some people are so informed and some people are so stupid. There is no union between light and darkness. Mm -hmm. For me to unite with you, you have to come up to the level of information. I can't come down and unknow what I know. It's difficult for me. <laughs> I already know. I have been informed. It's difficult for me not to, un not to know. It's difficult for me to un unlearn the information and the facts on the table. All I'm asking you, please, get on the same level with me. I can't unite with you if I'm here and you're here. Bring up your level of information. Go and educate yourself. Ask questions so that we be on the same level. Then we can unite and it will be easier to work for us, for us to work together. Sister Mona, you can finish up, please. It's just remaining a little. So we'll just finish up. These are not the elites who have robbed Africa. These are world-class officials 
they've got an uphill struggle, but I think Africa may have turned the corner. Were the days of empire or nationhood? For over a century now, the world's relationship with Africa has been built on disparity. Africa's wealth has helped bankroll the giant strides in technology, communications, and business made elsewhere. But by safeguarding natural riches, prioritizing national interests, and with trade and development done on equal terms, there's a chance the coming 50 years could break the cycles of the past and finally bring real independence. We should not make colonialism responsible of everything bad in Africa. After all, the, for 50 years, some of this country have been independent. Now, we agree with you as a student that 50 years are not long enough. But 50 years are enough to begin to see clearer where to go. We have to insist on the responsibility of the African leadership also. The, Natural bounty given by nature and God, instead of being a curse, may well become a new opportunity for better tomorrows under democracy, transparency, great respect to the law. All right, this guy did a, a funny thing at the end of the this thing that he mentioned that we cannot blame everything on uh, colonialism, which is true. And that's why we're asking that, what role have we played to allow this to linger on? You know, we do understand there are uh, internal colonizers that are there to make sure that the business, you know, is in line, still flowing for our colonizer. But what are we as citizens, what are we doing to ensure our rights, to make sure that things are not, uh, things are done right, to make sure that our rights are protected? Sister Kui mentioned the fact that we tend to glorify our uh, uh, captors. We tend to praise them. We tend to not hold them accountable. Okuro Ocha will come and steal all the resources. Nothing will happen. But when your brother takes a phone, because that's what is going on, everybody has social media, maybe they want to have a phone, you will be quick to put a tie on their head and burn them. When the ones that are stealing millions, which if that boy, that young person is in class learning, getting some resources. Maybe he wouldn't even be thinking about getting a phone. So what role are we playing to ensure that these things get better? There are so many things that we can do. The first thing is education, having the knowledge to understand what's eating your grapes. What are those tentacles that are holding you down? What are those tentacles that are stopping you from getting to your destination? And once we identify that and get rid of it, then we can move forward. We are not, we are not going to come down to your level, but the good news is that we are willing to extend our hands to you, to pull you up to where the information is so that you can get your own knowledge. Because with that knowledge base, then we can move forward. I was fortunate enough to watch the story of Singapore and how they became uh, a great nation. And it was touching, I, I'm, I'm gonna post that video. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to post that video, sorry guys, <clears throat> on our uh, Facebook page, just for you to watch. This man had to literally retrain the mind of his people. He told a story where even when they were put in a high rise, because they are used to living in a slum, they will pee in the elevator. They put a sensor so that when you're peeing in the elevator to take you on your high rise, it will stop you. These people, we are so backward that they got they, they tried to overcome the system. So instead of peeing the elevator, they will open the elevator door and pee out. So what the government did was now put a camera so that when you pee, they will catch you and you will go to jail. And immediately be, <coughs> people begin to receive sense. So I'm not, <coughs> I'm not saying that we should jail our people. I'm saying that part of you know they have to do what they have to do to retrain the minds of their people. Our people has been they have been held down for so long that they don't even know they are right from their wrong. And that's what we are calling for on those in diaspora, those that have access to information, those that have access to electricity, to Wi-Fi that can get these things done. Imagine the millions of us outside Nigeria. If we get that information and now propagate information to the people on ground in our, in our land, imagine where we will be for them to understand what's going on. It's no longer okay to just give money and ask them to buy rice. It's okay though and buy rice and buy engine oil to go and cook rice. 
only for you to leave them hanging from January to December for another round of rice. We need to use our resources to educate our people and bring them up to speed and tell them about what's holding them down. What is the common denominator in all of these things holding us? We again attach this to the 1999 constitution that we did not make. That Britain is clapping our back. Jane Kerry went to make sure that nothing gets changed because they saw Jonathan making an attempt. He haven't even started. He, they were just hearing that he, he has ear to get some things done and they showed up and destroyed it. But what are we as citizens doing? Even at that, as Americans are coming to destroy it, our people are there cheering them on. I remember Adiboye bringing Buhari to church to pray mm. for him. Yeah. Where is Adiboye in the midst of all these killings? So you see, that's why we cannot have- He has been paid off now. He has been paid off. I know, he has been paid off. Judas goats, Judas goats. They will leave the, 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 the sheep to slaughter and then they will sneak out. Then the people, the massacre will continue. And people the massacre are will continue. He's not even man enough to speak against what is going on. Why will he? He's a Judas goat. He has wow. done the job he was called to. They reward him with jet plane and, and uh, uh, private jets. And they're flying everywhere. I said they're spreading gospel. Which gospel are you spreading? That the, you, the one you're spreading in your land is leading to the death of your people. Mm -hmm. Who are you deceiving? Mm -hmm. Who is deceiving who? Get a life. It's, 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 it's heartbreaking. And the people they are deceiving are busy fighting for them. So these are the vices that we all need to break one way or the other. And it can start with being taking them out of that church. Stop exposing them to that toxin, because that's what that church they go to every Sunday and Wednesday is. It's a toxin that destroys their mindset. For them to stop that cocaine called church, that cocaine called church, because if they don't capture you on the street during the day, they will capture you in the church. And then they are still working with the same colonial masters. We have to do better. We cannot chalk up everything to the colonial masters, even though we know they still have a stronghold on us. But it's about time that we get that head of octopus, one strike, and end it all. Because we cannot continue to run in circles. The lives and the future of our children depends on this. The lives of our great-grandchildren depend that we get this right. And we cannot. We have been handed over the baton. Our forefathers couldn't speak English with these people, so they took them for a ride. Now the children of those that they killed are here. We've learned the language. We've learned the work. We've learned the engineering, science, whatever you want to call it. We are at the same level. So now what are we doing? Are we going to forget who we are? Because a lot of us are not comfortable, especially my Igbo people. They tend to want to be everybody else. If they go to Yoruba land, they will start teaching their children Yoruba and forget Igbo and teach them Yoruba and English. If they go to Dubai, they will start speaking Arabic and they will forget who they are. All in the name to, to, to mix and be part of it. And we're saying today, it's okay for you to be who you are. Come as you are. Whether you're Ijo, Igbo, whatever you are, come as you are and fight for your people, for your land. We need to go home. We need to go home. We cannot continue to serve our slave masters for years, even though we are serving them under a condition, who, are, who is then serving our people when we are all outside? As you are speaking, they are recruiting our doctors. We're supposed to have, uh, is it 200 doctors per 1,000 population? And we don't even have 2%. We don't even have two per. And as we are speaking, they are recruiting our people. Where are they recruiting them? The same Islamic people that are holding us down. By the time they come back, now, especially my Igbo people, they will be more Islamic than the Islam itself. You see that we cannot afford to let them leave that land. But my people are so smart, they cannot continue to be in a place that doesn't move forward. I can't even imagine with all the things that I have in my brain, I can't even imagine someone tell me not to use it. I can't even imagine. I would go crazy. So we have a lot of work to be done. What role are you willing to play? Let it start with us educating ourselves. Understand who is holding us down. Understand what the strategy is. Like we said, the LNC protocol for this self-determination that will eventually lead to, lead to referendum because some people are still confused. And these are educated people in London and wherever they find themselves, they are busy running for referendum without getting self-determination. Oh, my people, my people. <laughs> And they call themselves professors, doctors, and they call themselves professors and doctors. And that. 
You and see you, that Harvard education cannot help you in this. It's I know that man referred to it. The man you mentioned in Singapore, he said that their PhD holders couldn't deliver. Yes. <laughs> they are people that had critical thinking. Yes. Their no, PhD sorry. holders couldn't deliver. And, you know, and we be, that's why we've been telling you this all along, so that you won't think there's someone there speaking American or Queen's English that will get it for you. That you can get a little mama in the village that sells Ogri, and she will give you more insight than the Harvard graduate. We do under recognize the importance of speaking English, but we don't want those that are speaking English to run all, all the affairs. If you guys recall in this video last week, our brother Nkrumah, when he chose to get married, in the midst of all the things that is going on, the first nationalist to get Ghana together, who do you choose? Here you are. And when we talk about our mothers and the kind of things that they will do, people will take it the wrong way and say, oh, we are castigating men. There is no way I will be the first lady of my land. And the first person that I will choose to use are the kind of people that used to subjugate my people. Does it even make sense? It doesn't make sense. It's all enough for marrying a white woman. Yes. How would a woman motivate you into freeing your people? It's not only that then. Eh? Even if she, let's say she loves you, but she will still have the people, her people are in, in, in her heart. Who knows what information she was giving them? No, they, they, that's what they did to them. If you talk too much, they will plant their agents. You won't even know that they're CIA agents, FBI, you won't know. You fell, you fall in love with them and marry them. All the information is going out. And something that happened in Biafra genocide that we're telling our people. In the morning, they are with you. At night, they are with the enemy. How would you go forward? Then? How would you go forward? How would we go forward if we are not doing the due diligence, understanding the whole issue, and not to be emotional about it? Women will refuse to marry someone. Let's say now they know that this person will not help the rest of our family. Even with love, Nail, she will say no. Women do that all the time. All they the marry time. above, they marry up to where they're going where their asp aspiration is, they will go there. But our men, they want to marry, they are going to this place, so they marry down. How Who will you move forward? My dear, it's so bad. This thing <laughs> is so sad. It's so sad. We just want people to be at a higher level. So that even if we miss, we have to put things down and follow it line by line, just to understand our thought process and the outcome of each thought process. I think it will make us a better human being. Because if we continue to do the things the way we do, and go to someone our people will continue to suffer. It's about time. It's about it's high time that we do our work, that we do what is required of us. If you are here watching us, it's not by accident, it's by design. There's a reason why you're hearing this cold voice that I have today. We need to do more for our people. We can do this, people. I know a lot of people, our people are so scared. They wouldn't even want to talk to America, but here American maybe because they're afraid they will come and catch them. The truth remains constant. If you go up, you come down, it is what it is. And the good news is that they are putting down what they have done to us in a video. So it's not like I'm sitting here bringing oh. propaganda. Yes, I, Some of this, I wasn't here when a lot of these things would happen, but they put it in place where I can see and showed me evidence by evidence. No, they used to write them in articles. I read some in class, there but we didn't read. Our people still refuse to read. They now transferred it into video. How, what else can somebody do for you? They wrote it down, you do not read it. They put it in video, you don't want to watch. They put it in audio, you're not listening. And you know, Sister Muna, I think what happened to our people is that they underrated the greed, the selfishness, the wickedness, the evilness of our enemy. And some yeah, of yeah. the people that are working with, when they look at it, they're like, no, 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 human being cannot be this wicked now. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are they cannot phantom it. Yes. They can't phantom it. Mm -hmm. it's, it our people cannot phantom that human <laughs> beings can be this greedy and this wicked. That even uh, when African children are dying, people are still pushing down pushing forward the agenda that my people cannot believe that human beings can be this evil. I can't, my dear. We can't wrap around it. But like my sister said, it is what it is. It's better you face the reality and begin to think of how to come out of it 
because it's real. We overtrusted these people. We overrated their goodness and strength of character. Eh, mm. Onyocha, Onyocha said it. Once Onyocha has said it, Correct. Oh, right. It's truth. Mm -hmm. We, our people, overtrusted and overrated their goodness. We misjudged their intelligence. We thought they were all intelligent. That's why in this video you said that the first time Africans began to say we want freedom was when they did World War One and Two, because they mixed with them, fought with them, and I was like, eh? I "Not all that." What the hell is going on here? The hell? They said that they could go to the toilet and shoot like them. Like what? This man is very stupid. Now that that not that intelligent. So it's just us that we are trying to overrate them. My people moved in. Say, ah, uh -uh, I can have the line somebody that I'm even more intelligent that come be leading me like this. That is how our people began the, the war. So you when they say, oh, they want to help people, they want to give you aids, they want to do this. Check inside it. Check what they're trying to do. My then when they're giving aid, they're taking it back because you know um, that they know they know that we are coming one day to ask them for all the to pay for all the things they've taken. So what they are doing now is devising this aid giving and loan giving. NGOs. So at the NGOs at the end of the day, they will say, Oh, we returned it back through yeah, we gave it back to your government. But you know, I think when they give uh, uh Buhari three billion or trillion dollars, they have processing fees, they yeah. turn around and come and take the money back. They even take it before they give you. They can't give you what they have not stolen. Yep. They will steal 10 billion and give you 1 million. And you'll be singing and clapping for them. My people, we hey. overrated. They are wanting to help us. They are not helping you. Mm -mm. They, they are not you. for you. They are not for you. We allow them to promote the worst of us as the best of us. Mm -hmm. That's what we have done. For instance, if there are 200 people competing, inside the 200 competing, rather than pick the best, they will pick the worst that they can manipulate freely and then tell us that this one is the best and start promoting him or her. Check it, whether in music, in drama, in anything. They will go for the one they can manipulate. The word is manipulation, the one they can use against us. So they will pick that one up and start promoting that person. Do you know the Obama campaign for Buhari? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. How can in somebody in this world that calls himself that he went to school look at this man with record of no no high school education to rule when him himself went to Harvard? Exactly. And to rule 215 million intelligent people with professors and doctors. Does it make sense to you, my people? So they will take these people and promote them they give them awards or uh, give her awards pushing them down your throat they make so much noise that you are saying what are you saying this person i used to know him now this person is not uh, anybody that is any no they'll say no 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 he's all this he's all that he's all that and they'll start castigating the other person meanwhile they will have a, they already have a system that suppresses and overpowers the rest of us that we will never get a chance to rise so why they are promoting this wicked, stupid, the worst of us, that criminals that in our village, we know that we don't even support these people. They will promote them. As they are doing that, they will put a system in place that makes sure that the good one do not rise. It's in our algorithm, like my sister always mentioned. It's there in the algorithm. Once you put my name is so-so-so, my name is said, the algorithm will put you down. It's already set. It's a system. It's set. It's you will never come forth. Mm -hmm. to be picked yep so it's about manipulation and corruption everything they confuse everything so that if you're not looking deep you'll be deceived the algorithm produces both the action and the reaction so when you be you see the action and you say ah oh, this is the reaction they are the ones doing the reaction too it's the same source so that you are manipulated and your mind will never function. So you are not part of either the action or the reaction in this their colonialism and neocolonialism system. You are not part. You are not part. And you are not the same. So stop thinking that you are the same with these colonizers. 
you are not the same. You are a different person. You are different like night and day. You are different. There are wickedness, you can't measure it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There are corruption level. Your own is still doing warm up. They are so corrupt. So we want our people to begin to understand that you are not the same with those people. And so that you begin to think differently. Think differently. Like my sister mentioned, how can you be planning to deliver your people and then you go and marry the people that are colonizing your people? <laughs> you are free to fall in love. We're not saying that you should not marry who you want to marry. But we're saying not when you are in the center of our freedom. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know that the villages will come from that. The Iwe, the Iwe or the prince cannot marry outside that village. It's not because we hate our neighbors. But because we know that the person that we might the interest of the king mm -hmm. is the wife. So if the wife is coming from the name, the enemy of the village, what are you taking? You're saying <laughs> the wife will tell the, the father now. Will tell them give it's like it's something at Delilah. That's the mistake that Samson made. Samson went and fell in love with his enemy. Did they not pluck out his eyes? Did he mm. not die? Nonsense. That's the same thing. It started from old. You do not, if you have aspiration to deliver my people, you cannot fall in love with the enemy, sir. Ma. Because it makes a mess of all the things you're saying. You might help one way or the other, but you'll be limited. And this is where I say for our people to wake up. So that when you see, we're talking about real people and fake people. If you are a real person, you will know that you cannot fall in love with the daughter of your enemy. Mm -mm. If you're not if you're at the place, critical time. Your brain will be working. Not at the critical time. Maybe when we finish the work and you are out of the place, you can now go and marry the person. Not in the middle of war. No, sir. No, ma. It's not acceptable. So if you have aspiration to deliver my people, who you marry is critical. It speaks a lot about what you are intending to do. Not It might not be all the time, but most of the times. We are pointing to our people what you need to look. Because we don't want you to be seeing less. We want you to look and see more. So that the more you look, the more you see. Not the more you look, the less you see. If not, they will do abracadabra, abracadabra for you. We have failed as a people. Hmm. You can say that value. again our identity and what we have <laughs> like when my sister was uh, talking about at the, at the introduction africa is so blessed we are so blessed so what is happening mm. why are we not benefiting from the blessings because we have not valued our blessings and we have not protected our our blessings that's why people come and steal our blessings anyhow and we just dance around like zombies we have limited our potentials as a people. Both male, female, everything, we limited our potential. Like some of these things I'm showing you say, bro, did you see women there? Women naturally think critically. That's why they're the ones that run homes. Women are the man managers of homes. You didn't know before. We are the ones that manage homes. The man is the head. But we manage the home. We make sure there's light, there's water. Everything is functional. We make sure that the home is functional. Now, a man that has not managed home, he wants to manage nations. Huh? All by himself. Not oh, dear. Disaster. All by himself. <laughs> he wants to manage communities, nations. All by himself. Cut out from the woman. How do you think he'll be successful? That's not possible. He lacks the ability to be successful. That's why Africa is failing. Women have not been given their rightful position. And by women, I mean all the well-meaning women. First of all, the education they brought cut out the women. Women couldn't participate in whatever project the white man came with. Before the white man came, we participated because we spoke in our mother tongues. Women were part of market, business, everything. 
But when the white man came, they changed the system of education. We're not saying that you can't speak English, but we're telling you what happened to us. We're saying what happened. We're asking questions. What happened? Because when we understand what happened, we understand how to correct it. So women, we are taken out of the scheme of things. Like the woman is the, that human being that critically thinks. That's her nature. She doesn't need to go to school to get it. She she don't, you know, our enemies showed us this for years. You know that we call James Bond. You know the woman that is in charge of intelligence there, the person exactly. in charge is the woman. And then the James Bond will go and execute. Exactly. So they gave us signal for so many years that this is who is truly in charge. But what did my people do? They go there and read the movie 10 out of 10. They are not even understanding the signal. They swap. They came and learned our culture. Took our culture and gave us their own. Hi. They were the ones that did not recognize their women. They yes. came and learned yes. it from Africa and gave their women position and removed our women from the position in Africa because they knew that our women were the backbone of the society. They knew. When they came, they knew what our women could do. We didn't talk much, but we were influencers. We influenced the men and the women. We did not talk much. But they stopped that. Because if you don't hear the English, the language they used to do the meeting, how will you understand to advise your husband or the king mm. on what to do? You don't know the queen. You don't know what the queen is speaking. Pray, 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 pray. You don't know. Their education, you don't know. So the change you're beginning to see in Africa is as a result of more women getting into this education we are talking. Learning the language and learning certain things. Engineering and everything. So this process is not going to stop. It's going to continue. And we are calling on women. Please do not shy away. Because before, like me, I shy away from all these things. I don't want to be saying, oh, you're into politics. Or I said, no, no, no. Men be doing. Let me just, my children and my family. But things are getting bad and worse. So we are calling on our women, our mothers and daughters. Please do not allow anybody to intimidate you. Whether you are in, uh, in engineering, be the best engineer. Whether you are in medicine, be the best doctor. In your surgeon, you are a, a, a teacher, you are whatever you are that you find yourself as a woman. Please be the best because we are ready to liberate our continent. And we are not even joking about it. Sister Queen, they're already the best. Ask our men, how many times are you in class and women? How many of you are ahead of your women in classes? Please, our audience, raise your hands. When you were from elementary school to your college, how many, how many we are ahead of the women? If you look at the results, women are usually first, second, and third before God will allow somebody else to be the fourth. The so evidence is abound. There's yes. a reason why it's like that. So we're not even here to appeal to men to allow us to play in the role. We are not appealing. We are done with the era of appealing. We are here, match us. We are matching. We're not saying bring the quota system down. Leave the quota system high. We are here to match you because it's profession for profession. Our children are dying. We cannot take your shenanigans anymore. Every day, hey, this one did me. Victim mentality. We are here to work hard. We will work hard. That's what we're saying. Don't give us that part of gold. We will work hard. We will work hard to deliver, deliver our people and our land. And we are saying there's no war. For those that are calling for war, stop. You're wasting your time. There won't be war. The more you call war, the more they will kill you. And we will proceed. We will continue where you're going. We are not fighting war. Those that are calling for war in Southeast, stop wasting time. Because there won't be war in Southeast. They will continue to kill you. They will circle you and kill you. Until you begin to reason and come to the table of negotiation. We are going to negotiate ourselves out of this mess. Yeah, because we do have the brain power. We have the brain to do so. Well loaded. Why are we going to die like, like flies? Hey, they're killing us, they're killing us. You're running around this time forest. They're killing us, they're killing us. Even people that go to war, they sit down and strategize and move. Mm -hmm. You don't just go to war by going to the bush and say, see, uh, you see this container? We use it as a missile. Uh -huh. This is my laptop. I will press it. It will send weapon. Who are you deceiving? Who are you deceiving? Stop all this nonsense. We are here to do the real thing. So for years, we limited our potentials. Because if you have like 80% women and you're working with only 20% men, the people you're going to meet, their women are in the center of everything they're doing. 
that the secretaries that the ones getting information that the one they will even send them out to go and marry you and get more information those of you that are living in foreign countries you are living with their spies because they made it that for you to get the paper you have to marry their daughters you have to marry them why are they doing that why is it through marriage why is it not through documentation why will you not just work hard and then get it no through marriage they plant their daughter in your midst so that you don't you don't move anything you're doing she's taking notes and reporting and you know they're very loyal to their nation they don't even joke this is why you're going in circles but us in africa we are the ones to limit our women and go alone to the meeting and if you're going you go with your girlfriend that's 16 years throughout the night you keep you awake and then you go to the meeting you're sleeping 17 year old 16 year old that kept awake throughout the night with a younger girl that is 16. the, the energy doesn't even match <laughs> you are exhausted before you go to the meeting mm. and you want to go and negotiate for my freedom it you will. Want to negotiate for policies about a nation like nigeria hmm. i said they promote the worst of us and these are the ways our potentials were limited people of the north they introduced quota system like we said before. Sixty years down the line, check what is happening to the northern children. Sixty years after the introduction of quota system, they are behind civilization. If you get to the north, you will weep what they have done. But it was intentional. Yet the enemy Before wants the, the resources they have taken. Yes. Yet the enemy wants the north to continue to lead and become the president of Nigeria. The North must produce the president of Nigeria, right? But the North is going through quota system. So even in classroom, they did not match. Then all of a sudden, they want to be president. Hey, and well. somebody from the South is saying, I want to go into election with somebody like that. There's no basis. You're demoting us. And those of you that are demoting us, when we say there's no war, it doesn't mean that some people will not be plugged out. Not be me cause some more. Because the people are ready to get their freedom. And they're listening to us. Our children are listening. They're watching. And when we say use your brain, they are beginning to do that. So they are beginning to understand that when we say there's no war, that means no general war. But it doesn't mean that those that the agents are using in our land will not be asked to go. You know, in those days, we'll give you matches in my village. If you are the one, if my people notice that you are the person through which the criminal is entering the land, my people will give you matches. That much is that they are excommunicating you. They don't want to work with you anymore. And by that reason, if they see you near anybody's house, you're on your own. What happens to you? Or you? And that's what we're saying. In this day that we're here, we've been begging our politicians we said that you have been the the, the 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 venue, the avenue through which the enemy is coming to kill us. And we have begged you several. He said, stop. All political parties, stop. Close shop. We want to rearrange the formula in which we are being, we are being ruled. We said that Nigeria was amalgamated, that it was not done right. We are telling you the constitution is not done right. We are telling you everything is not okay. But no, you want to do business as usual. Mm -hmm. will not Benef happen. Yes, benefiting from our pain. Exactly. So you cannot continue to lead us from the point of ignorance. Mm -mm. It's no more allowed. Because you can see the indices now. People are dying. Can't you see the result? So that madness has to stop. We can't go one more day practicing this madness called Nigeria. Mm -mm. That our forefathers fought against. Do you know our forefathers fought against it? The grandfather of Oduku was executed at Nkwanewi because he was saying no to this system. When people talk about unity, unity is not uh, mixing kerosene and water. The core values have to be assessed. You unite with people that are speaking the same language that you're speaking. Absolutely. By that, I mean people that want life 
and you want life, even if you are speaking in robot or whatever, but you want the same thing. You want prosperity. You want to move forward. You want your daughters to go to school. So you must critically think and evaluate your options. Well, time you see it, you now move forward. And then somebody will say, okay, all these things you are saying, how can we move forward? Samuna has told us some already. First, we must clean up the mess that the colonial masters caused in our land. Mm -hmm. Remove all the fake boundaries. All this thing, we have to clean it out. It's like somebody made a mess everywhere. You have to clean it out. You can start building on top of mess now. Mm -hmm. We say foundation is wrong. So we need to clean it. So we begin to tell ourselves truth. Please, make up your mind. Begin to tell your brothers and sisters truth. No more secrets. No more lies. No more deception. No more manipulation. Our politicians, stop. Stop your lies. Stop all the conflicts. Even those in freedom fighting. Why are you conflicting with one another? When we say we want self-determination, you have refused to assess what is being said. All you do is shout. You want to promote it. <laughs> Who do you think will play that game with you? You can already see what your way is causing. That your way is leading us to death and more death. And you're stubbornly continuing in that way. What is your problem? We want to take out all the middlemen and the organizations that are benefiting from our pain. We don't want to work with them anymore. So any organization that what you're doing is to promote the enemy in our land, we don't want to work with you anymore. We want to begin to tell ourselves truth. We want to begin to deal directly as indigenous peoples. We are the owners of the land. We don't want to go through politicians to negotiate our freedom because the politicians are benefiting from our pain. So they will not be the ones to speak truth about our liberation. We, the indigenous peoples, are ready to move and we are going directly. You can see what happened in this video. The first thing Egypt did was to expel Britain as they work on their freedom. We cannot be lying to ourselves. Somebody is in our land, not ready to work with our freedom and we are promoting them. They will have to repent or leave. We do not want to work with people that don't want to work for our freedom. Like Sister Muna said, in here, we pay taxes for them. When they get to our land, they go to the enemy and have meetings. Who is saving who? Or the ego. So we want to begin to work towards the real independence. We said that what we had in 1960 was fake independence. We want to work towards the real one. Based on democratic tools. Real democratic tools, not things that people just want good about and brought in, in our land. You see, democracy without, there's no democracy without the people's constitution. That's the number one. If the constitution you have is not the people's constitution, then you're not practicing democracy. Nope. <laughs> you might be practicing demonstration of craziness, madness. That's what you're practicing. It's not democracy. The democracy is government of the people for the people by the people. So if the people did not make the constitution, what are you practicing? Like we said, we want to begin to be real to ourselves. We need referendum. We will use referendum to decide what we want to do. Referendum is a democratic tool that we use to say what we want. That's, it's like just it's voting still. So each thing we want to do, we want to vote. We say we want to do people's constitution. People say, yay! Then they go into their kitchen and start cooking that constitution. No, that's not what we're saying. For you to do constitution, first of all, you have to decide who is a Nigerian. Who wants to be part of your Nigerian project and who wants to be out? That's the first point of point. That's the first step. If you, if, you don't, if, you, if you want to stop deceiving yourself, the first step is to decide before we make constitution, who is part of our nation? And you cannot trap any people beyond their freedom. If the South is said they're leaving, we will do referendum and they will vote out. If Yoruba said they are leaving, they will vote out. If Hausa said they are inside, they will vote in. 
is a process. And UN will supervise it. As all this is going on, APC, PDP, APGA, at the national level will hold on first. There will be transitional governments that will be taking care of running day-to-day -day activities. They will not make major decisions. It's just the functionality. You know, why that thing, why the process is going on. This is what other people have done. We want those that will respect us, that, that will lead us, to represent us, to be truthful people. Not just rich and popular people, if you are rich and popular. Because what made you rich is this corrupt system. So you're benefiting from the corrupt system, the old way you're benefiting from it. How can you represent us? Mm -mm. So you can't represent us. We want to represent ourselves. And that referendum is the way we will speak what we want to say. Ninas has given us five demands. First, Consignor First Major was done on the 16th of December, 2020. We want everyone to embrace that. Including Buhari, Bubu, you're just signing up things and doing as if you're not hearing. I thought they treated your ear problem. <laughs> Are you still having issue with ear? Please stop. You need to acknowledge the Consignor First Major. Because it's a dispute. We are saying that this constitution, we officially said that this constitution, please let the callers get ready to call, right, Sister Mona? Yes. We are saying that this constitution, we did not make it. And while we are trying to, and we say even Nigeria itself is by force, these are all the disputes. And we said, okay, for us to fix it, we need a traditional government, like they did in South Africa. While the traditional government is going on, we will be deciding what to do with our lives. It's called self-determination. That means me, self, I want to decide what I want to do with my life. Whether I want to be part of Nigeria or not, I want to be. And some people say, no, we're not supporting that Nigeria will break. No, that's your own opinion. Allow me to say my own. That is democracy. True democracy is everybody will have the opportunity. Whether you are 20, whether you are 200 as an ethnic group, you will have opportunity to speak your mind, say what you want. And that's why we have to begin this unity. The unity cannot start with from people suppressing people that are talking. We have the right to speak our mind. So you are arresting us and killing us. You are showing what we are saying, that you are not practicing democracy. That's what you are showing to the world. So begin to calm down. We are uh, we coming down because we speak our mind and stop arresting and killing our children because they're speaking their minds. And we say we want to go through the system. There's a process. Two steps. Two steps only. It's not 10. It's not 20. Two steps. Number one, we have to decide who is a Nigerian. Number two, we now get the constitution that they will read. Remember, we had federation before, and we have four constitutions that came together to federate. That's what our forefathers wanted, and that's where we are going to. Regional autonomy, true federalism, but the people will make that decision. It is people that will decide it. And this we are telling you is truth. Sister Muna put up the five demands so that we'll read it out again as it is for our people. First, it says, acknowledge declaration of consumer force majeure by indigenous peoples of Middle Belt and South. That's Ninas. Two, throw away, decommission, the repudiated 1999 constitution that was imposed on the people. The people did not make it. Throw it away. Throw it in the trash. If something is fake, like fake passport, what do you do to it? You throw it away. Number three, formally announce that general elections in 2023 under this repudiated 1999 constitution are suspended. Because we cannot be going to election. Who are you electing? Or which, which constitution? We say we don't have constitution. If you elect somebody, what are you going to swear the person in? And we're saying at the national level, because the disputed land is Nigeria. We are not disputing with Igbo land. We are Igbos. Yoruba is not disputing with Yoruba land. <laughs> Yoruba is in Yoruba. Middle belt. So we are not talking about the local people. That we, we are the owners. We are saying at the national level that is called Nigeria, we want to decide who has to be part of this nation 
and who does not want to be part of it. So you formally announce that you have to put that ge those general elections also keep them first. Let's finish the main thing, then we can continue. Then formally invite the people of South and Middle Belt to work out what a new translational, uh, tra transitional government will look like. Because for you to have a transitional government, and we have done it before, and then Shereko was a it was a transitional government he was heading. So this is not the first time. <laughs> we decide who is a member. Uh -oh, wow. Line and what work are you giving them? What's the mandate? These three things: members of traditional government, the mandate, that is the scope of activities, things you want them to achieve, and the timeline. You're going to do this in six months. You're going to do this in one year. We this is that's how it's done everywhere. Then the last one: formally began begin a time bound transition process under that traditional government when the ethnic nationalities. We carry out. Um, can you pull it off? Uh, up yes. Because this yes. uh, tagged information is not allowing us to see. You see okay. it now? Yeah, I can see it. When the ethnic nationalities, we carry out their regional referendums. The results determine next negotiations. That's what we're saying. We don't want to fight. There's no need to fight. Mm -hmm. What are you fighting when we're saying this is our right? And these people that have refused to go to school, it's showing now. Some people ran out of Nigeria because they couldn't pass jam. Yes. And went abroad to do some things. And up to now, their brain did not develop. And that's what we're seeing. When we're here telling them this is what they did, they'll be outside funding people that are bombing our land because they're not understanding. Their brain is not working. We are saying, stop. Stop. The people will negotiate their way out of this freedom. We are not killing anybody and nobody should be killed. There's no need for it. Those of you that are going to court, listen to this. You go to court. Free our leader. Free our leader. Free our desire. Okay. They free your leader. Then what happened next? Guinea Mesia? Have you seen that you're not negotiating for the freedom of the people? <laughs> have you seen that what you're fighting for is the freedom of one man mm -mm -mm. listen these things are done through processes you left the track <laughs> that's what we're saying <laughs> we were going to somewhere you entered Appian Way and because you entered Appian Way we are not going to leave where we are going we are here to work for the freedom of our people self-determination you that you enter that pian way when you finish if you want you can repent and come and join us in what we're doing but for now we want you to begin to speak true to yourself we want you to begin to understand that you're no more fighting for the freedom of our people be real to yourself speak true to yourself you have left the cause and that's what happened to some people in yoruba land recently as we were going, they went to go and start negotiating presidency for Yoruba candidates. And the rest said, no, you cannot use Ninas to negotiate something else. Ninas is here to negotiate the self-determination of the indigenous peoples. No other agenda. Any other agenda people want to go into, we are not part of it. That's why some Yorubas, like Yotumba that we're mentioning, said, I'm remaining with Ninas. I'm not going to negotiate something else through Ninas. And we have said it, that we have come together under Ninas. And no single block will lead us astray. Yorubas will not use Ninas to negotiate Yoruba presidency. Igbos will not use Ninas to negotiate the freedom of their Messiah. Middle Belt will not use Minas to negotiate any other thing but the self-determination of the indigenous peoples. That's what we came here to do, and that's what we'll get. And we are needs. So please, if you got confused as to where we're going and you left the track, we are only appealing to you. Don't cause trouble. Just be sincere to yourself and come back to the track. Those that are working for your Messiah, 
We are not telling you not to work for your Messiah, but do not disturb what we're doing. When you finish delivering your Messiah that got himself, these are our plans. You know, these are our plans. It's the plan. It's still from the colonial masters. We have shown in this video, when people set out that they want to do something, they will either give them a wife or give them another project or give them the political position. You know, they make them famous, promote them, and then move them by the corner. It's the tactics of these people. These are intelligence officers. They have intelligence officers too. So they work with these people. But the people, if you do not look well, you'll be carried away. And we're here as mothers to say, please, don't be carried away. We want you to think. Anything that does not make sense to you. You don't need PhD. Anything mm -hmm. that does not make sense to you. Begin to look deeper into it. There is hanky-panky, what you call hanky-panky, inside the matter. But people will say, what well, came when no fear before I come mad? If you leave the monkey hand inside soup, if you begin to look like the hand of a human being, but if you remove it on time, once you just see it, you say, ah, ah this is an aberration. This is not okay. Remove it. That is talking about sincerity, honesty, that we okay. can do for that if we are not sincere to ourselves, if we are not sincere as to what we want. We present this thing to you. We put proposition, Nina proposition onto you, on the table for you. Most of you have not read it. Are you sincere? Mm -hmm. They're busy t telling us as if something happened, there was some news going on. They were like, oh, all what you're doing has fallen apart. No, dude, you're not even. You are so lost in the wilderness, not even Jesus Christ of Nazareth will save you. So but if imagine how something can be, something somebody is working for you using his or her money to work for your freedom, then something that you thought happened wrongly with it, instead of you to be crying, you are now mocking and saying, "Yeah, he has." Won. Meanwhile, you are still inside the pot of shit. You are in the pit of shit. You are not out. I'm comfortable by the grace of God. Where we are, we are comfortable. We shouldn't even be doing what we are doing, but for the love of our people, and we are here. To work for your freedom, and then something happened that you do not even understand what happened. You're cheering and say, Yay! <laughs> when we tell you people that your brain is below, you'll be mm. happy. And some people genuinely called, Hey, sister, what is going on? I explained to them, This is it, this is it, and they were happy. So, thank God, even those that are not even in us yet, because they are following closely. There's some other monkeys. And so and some I couldn't talk to them. I just blocked them. I just said, I can't talk to you because I have the right to decide who to talk to people. That's, that's part of the democracy. It's my right. It's my right to decide that you're too stupid and I don't want to engage in any conversation with you. So I say, you are arrogant. You are proud. I say, hmm, I don't know what you call it. If me refusing to accept your stupidity is arrogance, I think I need to be a little bit of that. So be it. And no apologies. And I'm begging you, please, come to the level of our arrogance that I am. Stop accepting stupidity. Hmm. Please. Because stupidity will not help us in this matter. Mm -mm. Critical mm -mm. thinking will help us. Anybody calling? Not yet. So it's time for you to call and give us your two cents. And please keep your uh, comments towards the today's topic. You know, what role are we Africans playing in our enslavement? What is it that we can do to get out of this hellhole that we find ourselves in? We're giving you some of uh, some pointers. You can bring up some more pointers about it. You can tell us what you're doing to educate your people about their self-determination because rice and diesel oil is no longer enough. You saving money and working 12 hours and sending for Christmas so that you all want to war. Okay, how do you say it? All one in one hour. Huh? All one in one village. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes, for you to answer your big name or for you to lie to yourself and gather medication. I want it to all right. You gather your medication and you lie to yourself and providing a health health tech and a health fair only for you to go and give them medication and drastically bring their blood pressure down and blood sugar down with no further medication causing their early demise. You can see that the work you're doing is not taking my people anywhere. 
if you truly care for your people, bring down this forged land 1999 constitution so that we can build a hospital where our people will get daily miracles. Not that the one they will be in church, 20 million of them, only two will be healed by chance, by the way. If you know one or th two things are on statistics, it's just by chance. We want true miracles for our people. We don't want our people to be praying for miracles when the append app appendix has inflamed, it's about to rupture. We don't want prayer for that. There's something called surgical intervention that can be taken, they can take it on that surgical, can take care of it, and they will go home and go about their business. Here in America, surgery, appendectomy takes about two hours. You sit out to the hospital for an hour or two, they'll send you home. There's no miracle associated with that. So that we can begin to offer our people the true help that they need. So if you're raising fun from your village standpoint, you're raising fun from you working double shift, Put your eyes into what the nurse is doing so that we can tear down this broken foundation and fix it once and for all. If you truly care for your people. Don't get me wrong now, because some people will say, oh, I was listening to some random lady on TV and she said, don't give money for Christmas. That's not what I'm saying. But don't use it to deceive our people and act like you're doing something. When you have left what will help to bring down the constitution and be giving them only rice and be watching us to, to see if we will fumble. So you can clap for yourself and say, hey, ha, dollar. I see if that will change who we are. Who not talk, really? Because as mothers, we are here to make sure that the right things are done. We are not going anywhere. So whether you're calling us names, you're putting it on our Facebook, you're whatever you're doing, you we go nowhere. We're only the one that's English. Our people must okay, when hear that American alien quantum. My people must enjoy it in my lifetime. Not when I'm dead. That's what I'm here for. I don't know what some of you are here for. Some of you wants to be taxi driver, and then when you get your shouting fake freedom, then you become minister of transportation. I'm good. I am blessed and highly favored. I don't know what else I will get now in life that will excite me. Maybe it's more millions to help my people. But apart from that, I'm comfortable. When I say that I'm highly blessed and favored, I'm not bragging, I am. I am at peace with who I am. If I go home today, my dear, I have done the good work. And that's my ultimate goal. So I'm not doing this to come and steal your resources. I'm not doing this to come and be your Lord and Savior. We're supposed to use our resources to enhance our people. I shouldn't go to America and obtain 20 degrees to use it to intimidate my people. I'm supposed to use it to elevate my people. And if you're not doing that, you're wasting our time. So be sincere with your heart. Be sincere with what you're doing. Be an authentic person. We posted that on our Facebook just so for some of you that don't know what that means. Because oh, 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 it's a big old oh, 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 oh. Hmm? We can do this, people. It's not that complicated. It's not that twisted. Come with an open mind, an open heart, the willingness to learn to ask the right questions. Do your homework. Do not come in the middle of lecture and ask us to go back because you just got here. Get your textbook and start beginning to work, catch up and then move with the group. New way of thinking. The mothers are here, we're not going nowhere. We are saying whether you like it or not, the right thing must be done. Whether you like it or not, because some people say, oh, they are harsh, those women. And um, baka, 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 doctors of uh, evil. We don't care what you call us. We are here to save our next generation. So you see, your word of mouth and your texting of curse word will not stop this. It's a divine work intervention that we came here to do. And that we will deliver with or without your consent. I, I will not even need the concept of such people. You no. don't need their concept. <laughs> Absolutely not. So if you guys want to call in or if you want to be on uh, the screen, I don't know if somebody will. Actually, let me post the link. We have a few more minutes to go. I can post the link because some people like to be seen. If you want to be seen, you can actually click on the link and jump in. Uh, if not, just call in or we'll call it a day. We know that our show is highly packed. Some people don't even know where to begin. They are so overwhelmed with the information. They don't know what to ask. 
Mm, some of our people are tired, mentally, physically, and otherwise. They are so tired of watching our people suffer. They don't know what to do. And we understand that. Do the best you can where you find yourselves. I posted the link if you want to use that link to join. Or if you want to call in. We have identified the head of the octopus. And we are going to give you one target shot so that he can die and let us go. But do you understand what that means? Do you know what the head of the octopus is? Do you know how to deal with the head of octopus? 2022 is about to, 2021 is about to end. We're entering 2022. Before you know it, 2023 election that they're trying to uh, uh, partake in. What work are you doing to ensure there's no process of that going on in your neck of the wood? Are we going to watch our enemies and the, those benefiting from One Nigeria to continue to enjoy life while we go in circles and burn our people because they stole yam, they mm. stole G, they stole Ed, they stole a good, they stole an iPhone. By the way, don't kill any of my people. If they steal your yam, call this number here. I'll pay for it. Plus one seven seven four three three eight zero nine four two. Do not put any tire or gasoline or stone on my people because they stole. If you want who to kill, you know who they are. No more bloodshed in our land. If that's sincere, because if, if you're sincere, you cannot leave the head of octopus and go and be chasing the tail. Can you imagine? If you're if you're sincere, you know who to kill, like my sister said. Yeah, you know real who criminals, you know who the real criminals are. Then in the go in my culture, we have mm -hmm. And they say when somebody is stealing soup, you should give them a bar to eat because they're hungry. That means mm -hmm. the society has failed. That's why Be that rebel. culture is like that. That if somebody, because we are supposed to be brothers and sisters keepers. They said in my culture, in Igbo culture, if your brother or sister has to steal soup or food to eat, the entire society has failed. That means that that boy maybe is an orphan, is fatherless, or is something. That's why he did not have to eat, that he had to steal to eat. So you should take, be accountable, you should take responsibility of your failure. That you failed, that if your child is not stealing to eat, because we come from the ideology that a child belongs to the community. If your child has to steal to eat, we have failed as parents. It's time to be real to ourselves and begin to accept our mistakes. Hmm. Clean we up our mess. Mark. We miss the mark. So we need to clean up our mess, like Samuna said. It's time to clean up our mess. We allow them to shit in our land. Hmm. Because we are ignorant. We underrated them. We overestimated their goodness. And we're saying it is time to change all that. The indices are there. So it's not something that you're saying, I don't know what they're saying. You know? some, some of our politicians, that are saying, oh, it's not really very bad. But you're going with three armored cars, bulletproof. Only you. Only mm -hmm. you. You have three bulletproof cars. Only you. Really? And you think everything is okay? And you think we are not in a state of emergency? <laughs> is somebody calling? No, no. All right. So we just wrap it up and uh, chuck it off for next week. I'm not really feeling that great. Yes. So do what you got right. to do. You know, we have identified the head of the octopus. And once we kill it, the, the tentacles will have no choice than to die. Follow the Nina's voice.org. Go and learn what we need to do to get to our self-determination. This thing is uh, it's not that difficult. Too. Mm -mm. And the UN is waiting for you guys to understand it because this one we're not going to put on UN. Mm -mm. It's the ignorance of the citizens that is keeping us down. Because if we decide to take our power back, UN cannot stop us. No. Nobody can stop you. No. But if you decide to, you know, wallow away in ignorance because you don't know what your rights are, you're too hungry, you're, you've been captured or whatever, then you will be this in perpetual hell. It is what it is. <coughs> so do your part. Sister, go ahead, your final word. 
<coughs> um, my people, like uh, Dr. Muna has told us, we have identified the head of the octopus. It will be deception if we not leave the head as that is in detail. Hmm. We don't want to deceive ourselves anymore. We want to be real people. Fake people are the ones that deceive themselves. We will not deny that we don't know what the truth is. Please share this video. Send it to your politicians. Send to your governors, governors' wives, girlfriends, concubines. <laughs> Send the video to them so that the work will begin. We have identified the head of the octopus. Let's crush it. Let's destroy it so that the, all the tentacles, whether there are 20 tentacles, will dry. See you next week. Love you always. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys.